Welcome back to Niagara Falls. Daredevil living in front of the whole world. On that theme, we bring you a shameless plug. <laughs> a new reality series on ABC called Glass House. 14 people living in a glass house with America via social media, dictating what they do, wear, eat every day. Glass House again starting Monday, June 18th, 10 p.m. right here on ABC. But right now on ABC, we continue with our countdown as we wait for the moment when Nick Walenda attempts his walk into history. Across Niagara Falls, we wet your appetite with our countdown of the greatest mega stunts ever. Number four on our list, the year 1970. A Japanese expedition comes to Mount Everest. The mission to get Uchiha Miura to the summit. Eight members of the team die in the ascent. Miura has a plan, get to the top and then ski down, never attempted before. This is the single most impressive stunt because before you ski down Everest, you have to climb Everest. That ain't easy. This guy leaves the summit of Everest and goes 6,000 feet down in like two minutes. His parachute is pretty nice. It's a pretty sweet parachute, though. It's pretty. It's all pretty. But it, it, his parachute deployed, and it just pretty much saved him from killing himself. He's not doing too bad. And then, of course, I go, oh, yeah, this is not a ski resort. It's Mount Everest. Just below 26,000 feet, the face is sheer ice and nearly vertical. The skis cannot hold. I put that guy in the same category is Evil Knievel, you know, you're doing stuff that your equipment's just clearly not made for it and, uh, and pushing limits that blows our minds. He falls over 1,300 feet and comes to rest just 250 feet from a crevasse and near certain death. Though not successful, Miura is unhurt and the attempt is legendary. I don't even remember what he looks like, but I remember the act. I remember what he did, and what he did was so special and so amazing. At our number three, Robbie Madison, who rides his motorcycle for himself and his hero, Evil Knievel. I feel like I have him with me and we're doing this together. This jump sets a new world record for distance, a football field in the air but it's nothing compared to what comes next. I just wanted to be a game changer, to be able to do something that no one else did. The stunt takes two years to prepare, an unprecedented attempt to jump from the street to the top of a 10-story building. And I was just looking at this thing totally in fear. Robbie Madison is saying this is it. New Year's Eve, 2008, Madison takes off. He has to hit the base ramp at 54 miles per hour precisely. Time stands still for a split second because you're shooting up into the pitch black of the night. And that's all you can see is pitch black and you kind of just notice the roof kind of just disappear under you and then just touch down. He jumps it and I'm thinking, all right, that's it. Oh, but of course not. We got to go back down. He goes back down. And as I looked over the edge, this was like a, looking over a 100-foot drop down and just seeing people look like ants. Here we go. A 10-story drop that no one thought he should attempt. He did it! When I got down the bottom, I didn't know what to feel. I mean, it was, I just achieved the, the greatest thing I'd ever set out to, to do. At number two, when New Yorkers woke up on a gray August morning in 1974, there was a man on a wire walking 1,500 feet above the city. It was Philippe Petit. Philippe Petit was the most incredible stunt I've ever seen in my life. Crossing 200 feet of the void between the Twin Towers, an artist in complete control. Walking a tightrope difficult, right? Walking a tightrope in the 70s when you have to wear bell bottoms, worse. There is a calm about Petit as he crosses. He seems relaxed as the city holds its collective breath I love to go on the high wire, and the um, sickness is not enough for me. Petit's reward? Arrest for disorderly conduct and criminal trespassing. But he also inspired the next generation of risk-taking dreamers.